Today, I'm gonna conquer making more realistic diorama concrete cracks. But this is just one of the tools that we'll use. Stick around to see the whole process. If you're trying this for the first time, I encourage you to do it on a test piece, which is exactly what I did before moving on to a full diorama. I want this wall to look like poured concrete with several slabs, so first I carve and then indent the slab lines. Next I do some light texturing with a ball of tin foil over the entire piece. So far it's looking like textured concrete, so now we have to move on to the next step. I'm going to use the handle end of this screwdriver to make an impact in some pre-carved scoring lines that I placed on the foam. It isn't visible in the shot, but I'm using the rubber mallet to hammer the screwdriver into the foam to increase the impact area. Then I use my ball of tinfoil and a rock from my backyard to create further impressions in the area where I impacted the foam. The way I did this mimics a ripple effect where I started in the center and then expanded outward with these different materials. And I just tried to be really intentional about where I was placing my emphasis as I went through the piece. Next I carve a few little lines that are going to be the basis for my next impact area. And then I repeat the process that I previously showed you. Using the hammer to impact the screwdriver into the foam really creates realistic spider cracks and secondary cracks that I honestly am not skilled enough to carve myself and I like to work smarter not harder. Now I'm going to use the business side of the screwdriver to chip out some little concrete chip areas around the impact epicenters. Followed by some more texturing with the tin foil. Alright guys, so far I'm satisfied with the way this is looking. I'm actually really pumped about it and I think that I'm done with creating the cracks and things like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of wall spackle to make this even look more like concrete and then we're going to paint this thing up. If you've watched the tutorial that I have on my channel about creating realistic concrete, this is one of the main points that I make in that video. Using lightweight wall spackle allows you to simulate the texture of concrete if you combine it with some tin foil texturing and other texturing techniques, which is what I'm doing here. Doing this looks messy now, but it's going to come in handy later when we start painting this piece. I thought the dry time for this was 15 minutes, but it's actually 30 before paint. Once it's dry, we're going to be ready to do our base coat, which we're going to do next using some acrylic paints. I'm using Granite Gray by Apple Barrel, which is a light gray because I'm going to darken it up with some washes later. It's important to be generous with the paint here. There's so many little cracks and crevices in this area that we want to make sure that there is no pink shining through at the end of the project. So we want paint in all of those little areas. And if you're pressed for time, you can either use a heat gun, hair dryer, or the sunlight to dry this up. Here's a look at the entire base coated piece, which doesn't look like much yet, but it's about to get a lot more impressive. All right, this is dried. I did two coats of the gray on this, and now it's time to move on to our washes. We're going to start with a black wash. I used to exclusively do washes with paintbrushes, but I found these droppers that are on Amazon that I have an affiliate link for in the description that really make this a lot easier. Also, in case you're wondering, my black wash consists of black acrylic paint, water, and Dawn dish soap. Then I take a paper towel, dab up all of the black wash except for the parts in the deep cracks, and extend that dabbing throughout the rest of the concrete piece. After that dries, I go ahead and do the same exact thing, focusing on the impact areas or the areas that have deep dents, and I just sprinkle the black wash over those areas and then again dab them up with a paper towel. The key to washes is really just to do a ton of them, and so I've just been doing that with the black wash in varying layers, dabbing it up again. And as I dab it up, you'll notice it really starts to give that chalky kind of element that some concrete walls have, and I really think it's going to help with the realism of this. I let this dry in the sunlight, just laying it down flat to allow gravity to take full effect. And now I think you can really start to see some of the realism coming through and it starts with the way that that black wash went into the cracks and crevices and also how I dabbed 
the black wash using the paper towel almost like a sponge throughout the piece gives that sort of chalky kind of dusty look that concrete typically has so so far i think this is really where i want it to be and i think now we're going to start weathering with some browns and light tans and other stuff if this was an exterior wall we would definitely have some of that stuff accumulating the way it would with gravity Okay, so for this part, we're going to use uh, two different washes. We're going to use the black again, but first we're going to start with this light, uh, it's like a tan beige kind of color, and I want this to mimic just a little bit of that dirt or sediment that could accumulate over time. There's really no exact science to doing this part. You don't have to be too particular. Just kind of get some good coverage and allow gravity to take its course and allow the paint to run down the piece the way it naturally would. You can let this sit for as long as you want and the longer you let the paint stay, the more prominent it will be, but I just decided to go ahead and dab this up. Also, make sure to have fun with the colors. I'm using these colors because that's what made sense to me, but you could totally do different shades of brown. There are so many other shades that you can do that concrete stains kind of come through as. Another thing to consider is how subtle or prominent you want your staining to be. I wanted this to be subtle because I don't want to take away too much from the cracking, and I decided to do it that way, but you could totally have these sit for a while and make them a lot more prominent. So now once we've finished our wall, which this is finished in my opinion, I can use it in ACBA shots like this. And in this shot, I have the Retro Wave Marvel Legends Spider-Man and the Rhino that came on the huge card back. And I really love being able to do something like this with Spidey. He's my favorite and his villains are so awesome. And just Rhino, to me, makes a lot of sense in this situation. He's so strong being able to punch those cracks into the concrete and then have Spider-Man dodging those. Just seems like so much fun. So this is an ACBA setup that I'm definitely happy with. And I love the fact that you know I can make dioramas accustomed to whatever kind of scene that I want to set up. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch how I make realistic cracks in my diorama concrete walls. You could also use this in bases. I hope you guys enjoyed this content and I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel. If you want to find out more about how to make concrete without cracks, I have a video on that. And I also have other impact crater videos on the channel. Thanks, I'll see you in the next episode. Vasco Toys. Action figure, dioramas, and props.